Howdy y'all, welcome back, thank you for being here. If you will be celebrating, happy new year to you. Today, we're going to look at another mysterious piece of old world architecture, an anomaly. As we traverse all of the steps of history, the rising pillars of societies, which have helped shape every aspect that has led up to our modern culture, the architecture of our ancestors is something that equally intrigues and often infuriates us for its mysteriousness. Intriguing for the limitless possibilities, and today, inspiration can be pulled from this architecture for the designs which seemingly resonate with our modern interpretations of what the history is. Yet to reconstruct some of these ancient masterpieces would be nearly impossible according to modern archaeologists. Primitive. Some may say that this architecture is primitive, but I believe that this label is completely obtuse. While the towering, elaborate, and yet often cold steel skyscrapers of modernity seem to line even the most remote of major cities across the world, nowadays we have been programmed to not only accept these cold steel buildings, but to desire to live within and around them. When we focus on the old world, the buildings often designated as ancient, and the ones that are usually protected, they're almost always built out of some form of brick or masonry, and we begin to see just how intricate the needs and the abilities of our ancestors truly must have been. Look at any famous building in Europe, Rome, or even today we'll be looking at Greece. When we look at ancient times, for example, and find an almost mathematic rhythm to the exactness of the construction, we can look at modern buildings and also see mathematics at play. However, modern buildings appear to meander through the building of the walls and the supports which make them whole, while the ancient buildings appear to have the utmost importance put on every aesthetic value of the structure. At the same time, the true purpose of many of the most famous and ancient buildings across the earth still often eludes us, as history seems to seldomly allocate the proper written history to these structures. That combined with the fact that nearly every famous ancient structure has had multiple rulers, owners, kingdoms in control of the landscape, and thus subsequent renovations and rebuilds and rewritings of the history, which has rendered even the most memorable of ancient buildings with a history that is questionable at best. When it comes to Europe, we often are pushed to focus on Rome, with a diligence not often set aside for the other major kingdoms. As the saying goes, all roads lead to Rome. However, what if I was to tell you that one of the most important and record-holding and ancient structures, one which paved the way for later Roman burial sites yet incorporated aspects of earlier beliefs with major ties to Zoroastrianism, was to be found in Greece. And furthermore, what if I told you this structure, known better as the largest Corbel dome or beehive tomb in the entire world, what if I told you this structure could be used to prove the possible authenticity of a massive weather event which seemingly ruined lives all across Europe, including in the empires of Greece and Rome? Today, we will be looking at the treasury of Atreus, also known as the tomb of Agamemnon, located in Greece. As we browse these photographs, this beehive tomb, as you can see, is strangely reminiscent of the burial tombs that we find on every major continent on Earth. The seemingly inexplicable similarity of the burial tombs throughout unrelated kingdoms in the ancient world, kingdoms which were told lacked the ability to reach one another, or trade with one another, or communicate with one another. We're told these kingdoms somehow, independently, developed the same rituals and the same burial rites which led to the same stories like the story of the Great Flood, leading to similar burial mounds also being founded then worldwide. So the treasury of Atreus is constructed out of packed earth as well as Porta stone, a type of lightweight limestone, and finally the treasury also employs some very ancient yet miraculously cut marble. We're told the massive structure was founded at some point between 1400 and 1250 BC, being associated with the Late Bronze Age. Diving into this accepted detail further, we're told that this is the largest beehive burial tomb constructed during the entire Bronze Age, as well as one of the last. The main chamber, or the tomb, is circular in shape and covered by an absolutely unmatched Corbel dome. 
This was the largest dome of any kind in the entire world upon its completion, a title it held well into Roman times. And the Corbelt Dome still remains the largest surviving Corbelt Dome in the world. Incredibly, we're told the outside of the dome was actually lined with numerous dozens of Greek pillars made of marble, as well as the sculptures created to sit atop and within these columns. It is believed the treasury of Atreus was inspired by both Minoan and Egyptian influence. However, the true architects of this structure, or even who this burial tomb was constructed for, is entirely unknown. Here is where the history becomes a bit tricky. We're told due to the nature and location, the largest beehive burial mound in the world has often been associated with both Atreus and Agamemnon. These claims of ownership are said to have been tied to the 17th century research that began on the area. Yet with that being known, we're also told the treasury of Atreus was relatively unknown until at least the year 1800, being unexplored from roughly the second century onward. With the first unofficial excavations said to have taken place shortly after the beginning of the 17th century, however, it seems we have conflicting reports in this history. It's further convoluted by the fact that the official renovations began in the early 1800s, beginning first with the British, but the site was eventually torn up and excavated over the next 200 years by German, Turkish, Greek, American, and numerous other scholars looking to identify the true origin and purpose of this magnificent structure. As we look through these photographs, this entire structure, this treasury, was said to have been buried upon its completion over 3,000 years ago, meaning it was purposefully buried. More fascinating, many modern scholars see this construction as impossible to recreate today. For example, above the main doorway are two lintel blocks, the innermost of which is 8 meters in length, 5 meters in width, and 1.2 meters thick. With a weight of over 120 tons, it is the heaviest single piece of masonry known to have existed in the entire history of ancient Greek architecture. We're told this single piece required over 1,000 people to transport. Above this doorway is what's referred to as one of the earliest and the most famous relieving triangles in the world. An innovation first used here in ancient Greece to reduce the stress placed upon the surrounding pieces of the structure. The beehive is made up of 33 courses of ashlar masonry, initially constructed by the excavation of a cylindrical cavity from the hillside, which was then built up with masonry into the largest Corbel dome in the entire world. If that doesn't sound tricky, we're going to get into these details even more. The tomb was the tallest and widest stone dome in the world for over 1,000 years. We're told nothing is known about the organization of the tomb's construction, the architects themselves, or the exact workers who were put in to build this. It has been calculated that the construction of the tomb would have required at least 20,000 workers and when completed could have housed over 1,600 people. It is also estimated that the construction of the treasury of Atreus could have been a decades or even a centuries long process. Nothing is known of who might have been buried inside the tomb, though it is generally considered to have been an elite or royal figure, perhaps a ruler of a forgotten kingdom, one which appeared to have a stranglehold on much of Europe based off the complexity and size of the architecture of this structure. It is also worth mentioning that in the early 1900s, the treasury of Atreus was a massive point of contention between scholars, with vastly different dates, creators, architects, and processes being associated with this structure based off of which historian was presenting their information. Some argued that the treasury of Atreus was much older, almost dating to the age of the pyramids, and had been inherited by the people of ancient Greece from a previously ruling yet wiped out kingdom sometimes associated with ancient Egypt or Canaan. Still, others in the 1900s also argued that the treasury was actually a more modern creation, built sometime during or after Roman times. For over 1,000 years, our ancestors have been able to build into the earth with complexity, as we see within multiple landscapes. And here, 
we see some of the largest structures in our history as it relates to these tombs. The treasury of Atreus was a masterpiece of Greek times, a structure which would go on to shape history and influence later Roman architecture. But when we look at the treasury of Atreus, is it possibly something even more complex? Thank you again for joining me. Please like and share this video where you can. If you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel as I also have hundreds of other videos relating to other old world topics, hundreds of thousands of other photographs for you to look into and to save to your collections. I also can't wait to hear what you think about the treasury of Atreus down below because to me and from what we've read, this could have been a structure partially or completely underground which could have housed hundreds if not over 1,000 people. Yet in the modern narrative, we're led to believe that with almost certainty, this is a sort of burial tomb. But we have no exact evidence that points us in any direction completely, whether it's from the architects or the purpose of the building or anything like that. It comes from a very mysterious time period when we're looking at Greek and overall European history. So this is a fascinating piece of architecture, and I can't wait to hear what you think about it down below.